a lot of rain here for me today, but it's gonna get hot beneath this hood here with the all new Audi SQ7. That's today in Autogefuel, your number one resource for in depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. You see, we have the three color setup Seapang Blue, Daytona Gray, and Tofano White. You can pick your favorite color right now already and of course we tell you much more about the car, about the technology inside, about the engine, about the exterior, interior and the driving experience and I can tell you it's not only this V8 diesel that is the crucial factor, there's more behind this technology. So join us now here in Autogefühl in full HD, full screen and full length. SQ7 features a special front grille that's even looking more massive than the normal Q7 and of course special sporty spoilers there. And as you can see here, this one is the bright version. We'll soon also show you a different version. The SQ7 features 20 inch rims from the standard equipment then. These ones here, optional, it goes up to 22 inch and they're a little bit protected here by those tire lips. That's quite good. Of course, really huge. But I can already tell you right now, the, if you have the air suspension, which is serial with the SQ7, this also doesn't lose too much compass, I'm quite surprised of. Later on, of course, more to that while we drive the car. And this one here is the even more aggressive version. It's called, it's from the Audi exclusive line Titanium Black Gloss Package. There you get the black front grille, an even more aggressive look. And what's also interesting, as for the sensors, you see Audi does still have a 3D logo in the front and there's a sensor hidden beneath here. So this is a solution where you don't have to go for ugly 2D logo and then put the sensor behind it. Overall, a very aggressive look, especially here also with those LED lights, which are also included in the SQ7 package. Taking a look at the side profile of this 5 meter 05 long car, here in the Sepang Blue, this is my favorite color. We can also call it sometimes Thomas Blue. Here we got the contrasting side mirror caps as well as 21 inch alloys. And you see, well, this huge car already here, the rims look rather small, even if it's already 21 inch. Wow. And then, you know, this layout of this Q7 in general, some say it's more like a station wagon. Well, there's on the one hand, a disadvantage maybe styling wise, but the advantage is. It's not screaming out, I'm a huge SUV. It's more like a higher station wagon, so that can be a disadvantage or an advantage depending on your preference. A nice chrome frame around here as well. I will take it that way exactly as we see it here right now. Most attractive exterior to me. And in contrast to that, the one in white and with the black gloss package. It's also a very interesting color combination, definitely a very aggressive one. I would prefer the blue one, but maybe that is your favorite. We see also the two color alloys. Those ones are very beautiful. And behind that one, optionally, the massive ceramic brakes. Wow. It's great because the alloys don't get so dirty then. And of course, 2300 kilograms is the weight of the car and therefore the big ceramic graves can also help the braking performance. Here also the frame is kept in the black glossy color as well as the side in the lower part. And so overall, well, interesting styling combinations that are offered here. And we're coming to the rear, of course, still massive, very broad appearance and the SQ7 special one is that we got those exhaust here and well the very end part this angular one this was a little bit fake if we look in detail there are round exhaust coming out but it's really one two three four let's check out what's beneath the hood that's one of the big news here v8 tdi incredible horsepower 435 and 900 newton meters of torque and those are already pretty Pretty, pretty fast reached and the thing is with this one you can match all the performance of a big petrol engine 4.8 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 60 miles an hour really impressive figures and even more in the technology part we have first of all two turbochargers one running at low rpms the second one then also at higher rpms parallel and a supercharger so turbocharger two plus one supercharger electrically powered as well and so you have those three boosts for that engine. I think it's a little bit over engineered but of course it enables you power at any time. 
And the big news you can already see in the close up, here it says 48 volt. What does that mean? And that's actually the real new technology. We presented it to you a while ago, two years ago, in a RS5 concept. And here they've changed the power supply of the car, the internal power system, from 12 volt in parts to 48 volt to, for example, power the supercharger, Verdichter it would be in German, and also the electromechanical tilting function or the anti-tilting function that reduces that the car is rolling in corners. We'll get more into the details when we drive the car, of course. However, the rest of the system here, so for, for example, if you have the standard 12 watt power chargers for your maybe smartphone with an adapter um, and stuff, that will still run on 12 volt. Also, you know, when putting up the windows or lowering them again. And I've talked to the expert, they say it will also remain at 12 volt because for those easy systems, 48 volt would be too much, you know, and they have to make me protect it, you know, when you're grabbing the, the window buttons. However, it also gives us an outview to the future because with the electrification of cars, the power systems will rise. You need more power internally. And so we will partly see those 48 volt machines in the future, especially with the Audi mode and also with other car brands. If there's a cutaway model available, I would always like to show you that one. Here it is the case. It's still a very heavy car, as I've told you, with 2,300 kilograms especially also because the engine is very heavy. However, they have to try to save weight with the aluminum chassis. So most parts are really, as you can see from the from aluminum. However, it's a compound. We can see it also very well in a different color. This one here is then from steel because this one's here are the parts, you know, where you get the most stiffness, especially for side crashes. And therefore they have made that one here from steel then and from the inside and also from the later parts of the hood and stuff all are from aluminum. Let's get inside here with the very beautiful car key, also special with the SQ7 logo. Very solid door handles, also the closing sound of the doors. This is all perfection. By the way, here another detail here, this accentuation line in the design. I also like that one, that you can do such things nowadays. Inside of the doors here, a great Alcantara surface, feels very soft and also design-wise, just great contrast stitches here and I also like the wood inlet this one here is a black matte wood it feels very natural very nice when touching it although I'm usually preferring brighter wood but here it very much fits to the black and white atmosphere of the car in general also real metal is used here and with the matte aluminum just great styling and yes they have here if we move on further to the interior, then you can see the flattened end steering wheel, very sporty. And you already got a lot of equipment if you pick the SQ7. You can also turn on the ignition. Um, then you can see the Audi virtual cockpit. That one is optionally though. I would also be satisfied with the analog cockpit. However, if you pick the virtual one, you can change the views. That is uh, the advantage of that one, for example. Um, you know, change the RPM and the speedometer is smaller or bigger again. And there are also certain layouts, for example, um, you can pick a different layout here. This one is layout sport. You can also pick layout classic. Then uh, you don't have the RPM meter central, but you know, have a different layout. It takes some time always, says layout is loading. Then you have this more classic layout with RPM on the left and speed on the right. And you always get, for example, the GPS information in there. And even for the SQ7, lap timer is included here. I'm not sure, um, uh, you know, you can start here, starting round one. If you would use it in the SQ7, who would go on the Nordschleife with that one? I wouldn't, but at least you can lap time wise. Also included in the SQ7 package are those high floor mats. You can see it right here. Very nice, very comfortable, even if it's just for your feet. And what's also included in the SQ7 package are those sports seats we see here. Black and white is a nice styling, but you know, only the surface with ripped off skin of an innocent being are available. So there's no other option here for the SQ7. That's really a pity because, for example, all the other parts here, for example, in the inside, of the doors or also then the ceiling. This is extra really done from Alcantara and I would just wish that option also for the seats or better even the standard equipment that you got Alcantara also on the seats. 
and the seating position is upright and very comfortable so no moans about that and a lot of space you already feel it right here and of course you immediately get the impression that this interior is maybe one of the most refined in all of the automotive industry and not only mean premium brands also a luxury brand so some cars that are twice the price and this one have less good interiors this one is one of the best interiors overall as for the interior refinement and talking about the price of the SQ7, this vehicle here is at least 90,000 euros, for example, taking the German reference price 2017. It will also be available in the US then. And well, other SQ7 are also quite expensive. It starts at, for example, 60,000 euros in Germany, so 30,000 euros more. But Audi even says it would be a price advantage because you get this high package already. So if you have an equally highly equipped SQ7, uh, Q7, the SQ7 is not that much more expensive. And again, enjoy this cockpit overview here with me. As I said, one of my favorite interiors. It also counts, for example, for the new Audi A4. And you might remember the Audi A4, the owner generation, is the same platform than this one, the new MLB platform. And you can see that, that they share a lot of parts. I especially love the brushed aluminum here in the middle part. Also, just when going over it, it feels and also the sound it makes. So you have a sensual experience here in the interior and all of the buttons as well. There's this Audi sound laboratory where they spend millions that the buttons make those sounds here. See, there's even a sound difference between the lower and the higher one. High tone, low tone. Very interesting. And I mean, those ones are the features where people say, okay, I pay a lot more money for an Audi than for another non-premium brand. And that's maybe one of the reasons. Also, if you compare it to Mercedes and BMW, for the interior refinement, at the moment, no one beats Audi in case. And if we take a look at the vent control, you can see there's another visual highlight. If I just touch it here, the symbol gets a little bit bigger even before I control something. And then I can, for example, tune in and tune out of the vents. So really nice solution they found here that creates some wow effects. The infotainment screen, you can pop it out or in. That is different to the new A4, for example. This one is the satellite view. Um, you get that with a big GPS package at least included for a couple of time and later on you have to pay it extra then. We are dans les Vosges today, en France. And uh, we can also show you some of the other menus. The GPS is working very well, by the way. The menu here is a classic Audi menu. We can scroll through. It's not a touchscreen. Maybe they should consider that, for example, for the co-drive, but then it's quite far away in there. You can um, connect your phone via Bluetooth, for example. It comes automatically. German uh, menu today for our German viewers, but most of the stuff is not really different in other languages. Um, here you can change some vehicle data, um, set for example the Audi drive select to um, dynamic mode, um, it has to do with the steering, um, how the throttle input is, and also the suspension here, for example, when you have the adaptive air suspension. I usually prefer the just the comfort mode and all road mode would be also possible then you can see for example the turning angles of the vehicle of course we have an all-wheel drive here the quattro um, which you know sends also a lot of power to the rear wheels but not as much as for example in the Porsche you control the infotainment screen with its classic knob and you also have some hotkeys and then you also got this new touchpad and they can for example also go to the menu and it gives you even a little bit of a feedback. It's very interesting. You can put some hotkeys here as well, for example, um, just program them that, for example, you, with two you get to your favorite radio station, with four you get to the media selection or something like that. And here in the GPS I can also show you, you can type in the letters. For example, I want to go to Berlin. B. I just write them on this special touchpad. Oh. Storage spaces, start here at the inside of the doors. There's reasonable space, definitely. Also in the glove box that can also be cooled. Then there's narrow space in the front with another 12 volt power supply. Beverage holders, they are adaptive. You can put the bottles in here. And there's also a space specially designed for the car key. Fits exactly in, in size here. And if I put it right here, <laughs> just the car was closed here in that second. So another space in the middle console and we can flip up the armrest and then can put our smartphone here if uh, you for example um, 
have the loading function here, the special one with the logo on your smartphone. It works, doesn't work with the uh, older Apple devices and you need a special cover for that. And USB functions, and there we will also plug in for the smartphone connect. So there's also the Audi smartphone interface available now. But if you then plug in the phone with USB, then you see CarPlay automatically gets act activated. The first time you have to confirm it, then it's active and um, you have your favorite music then via cable. Well, I usually just come do it with the Bluetooth, but um, you know, you have this possibility here as well. And then you're in a, either in the CarPlay menu and you can access the Audi multimedia interface here always, or just, for example, go to the phone. Siri is not working at the moment because I don't have an internet, don't have an internet connection right now, but I can um, use the phone anyway. And you can scroll through the numbers, dialing right here. Or, well, I thought that would have been a good solution if you had this, um, this favorite numpad. That one could also be used for dialing numbers, but that's not the case here. That, that interface is not uh, really corresponding. But anyway, nice to have the possibility for Apple CarPlay here now. Of course, you have to pick it as an option. Let's check out the space in the rear. And it's a very long car, but also the using of the space is very good here. You see here, knee space almost a hand long and um, that's the seat setup as I would be driving with height 1 meters 86. Also we don't have the panoramic roof inbuilt here and I can almost also put a hand above my head. Really great space also there so really there can't be any more space maybe in another SUV so it's one of the biggest ones I've seen here from the interior. Uh, my favorite feature is that you can also change, for example, you have a lying seating position, but you can also change the rear part of the seat here. You can see the difference here now. So you can also have a very upright seating position. And I can tell you, the seating position here in the rear with this full-size SUV, the Q7, is better than in some of the very high luxury sedans because you have this upright seating position. Optionally, there's also a four-zone AC available, so two zones in the front, two in the back. And again, great sound here when turning. Just the highest quality possible with nice visualizations, no matter if you press vents or the temperature for each person. And every single seat here in the rear can also be just in the length. And even if I'm almost all the way in the front, I can still sit here. Then you can lengthen the trunk space behind you. And it's more important if you have the seven seater, then you can move with this seat a little bit in the front. And then it's also possible to go with two more adults in the back. And, well, there's no power supply, for example, for a laptop here. That's a pity, really. But two more 12 volt power supplies for your phones. But again, I would have wished, for example, like in a Skoda Superb or something like that, that we have a big plug in here where I could have charged my MacBook or so. And now let's check out the trunk. First of all, it says the sensors. Yeah, it's stopping. You see it right here. And then you go, you can continue the process. See also the sensor is reacting quite well, so for example to protect your children. And you can also push it up manually um, in case if you want to um, set the height, the opening height of the truck. Then you have certain possibilities here. First of all, it's a very wide opening, low loading sill, also very beautiful, those covers, high quality definitely. At the side, I can also, as we have the adaptive air suspension built in, put the car even lower as for the, there it is. So I have an even easier entry to the uh, trunk. And before that, you can also optionally get um, flipping buttons for the seats. Then you can flip the seats from behind here. It's not spec with this vehicle because you know, you have to pick every single option extra. Then you can just do that manually. If I go around and hit the lever, there it is. And there's an even loading space to all of the seats. So overall, a very well usable trunk. Here behind that one, we got some the Bose sound equipment. Um, you can optionally also get a full replacement tire, but I think it won't work with the optionally Bose um, uh, base boost here. Also, there are certain possibilities to, to split the trunk. This is also a practical solution. You can vary that in the lengths. Overall, one of the best usable SUVs as for loading space. And maybe to give you one more perspective, if we also flip the other seat bench, to show you also the middle seat, first I will flip this one here up. Well, at this setup with the five-seater, it doesn't make too much sense. But if you have the seven-seater spec that is also available for the SQ7, then you have an easy access to the 
third row of the seats. And here I can also show you them better. This strap below here, behind the seat belt. This is, for example, for the ESO-fix covers. And another strap right here. You can flip the seat, and then you have this even loading surface all the way to the end. Welcome you to today's riding part. And we start with the sportier part. Let me just fill you in on the details we have here on that vehicle spec. The adaptive air suspension is standard with the SQ7. And here we have the driving dynamics package, the advanced chassis package. And that one includes the all-wheel steering. That means the rear wheels at lower speeds turn in the opposite direction. A little bit just small, a few degrees than the front wheels. And at higher speeds, they go in the same direction then to stabilize the car. And there's a sport differential, which not only is the quad for all drive here, distributes power front and rear, but also between the rear wheels. And there's a third one that is also powered by this 48 volt power supply. The third one included in the driving package here is the active curve anti-tilting function. And those are electric motors on the wheels and when they're in the outer side of a berm and they push up the chassis so we don't lean to the outside of the corner because that is happening with big SUVs. I would say I talked enough about the facts here. Let's try that out. First in normal comfort mode and remember we got a very heavy vehicle here and a huge vehicle. And it doesn't feel like that. The air suspension, you're flying on the road, it's so comfortable, but at the same time, it's not wobbly. It's still super stiff at the same time. So, you know, to get this combination from comfort and response on the road, that is something very special. Going slower now, then the, also the characteristic of the car changes, and I feel it also a little bit that the rear is coming just around. I can also show you when we're just turn on st standstill in a small circle that for such a big vehicle with so long wheelbase we get a relatively small turning so look at that come on that's really a great result with this all-wheel steering and of course increase the agility also when we're riding a little bit faster now performance i can also show you but i go in sport mode for that one from 0 to let's say at least 80 let's see how, how much we can get let's go that's 80 90 and 100 so that was 100 wow 4.8 seconds is the official figure incredible performance for such a heavy vehicle and you know there wasn't any delay at all so really astonishing here in the sport mode now the gears are turned up higher in the rpms get even more access to the power and let's see let's hammer it a little bit in the corners here well definitely a fun ride i feel it now that the vehicle is kept relatively stable it's not tilting much to the right or left side no matter which corner i go into that's a really impressive thing so one of the sportiest suvs we've driven so far although it's probably also the largest SUV we've driven so far. And I think that definitely means something when the largest one is also the sportiest one. I mean, look how easy I can steer that car here. I don't have, you know, much hassle. It's a very easy steering, but still you get enough contact to the road. And there's no delay in the power at all. And it's going up and down here. Yeah, just incredible performance. Especially if you're living in those regions where you have a lot of those bending roads, then it might make sense to have those options because it makes you feel better. Especially also for the rear passengers if they're not like they're tilted around that much. So this curve, anti-curve tilting function is maybe to me the most impressive feature we have here in our today's review. And I also want to give you a riding impression how the car is feeling in the city and on the motorway because most of the time you will of course with this vehicle not just use the very curvy roads 
just have some riding fun. You will use it in everyday city driving and of course on long motorway runs. So that's maybe the even more important aspect. When driving the vehicle very calmly, you can of course not go in the S mode, just pick the D mode and you maybe heard that car shifts up a little bit earlier and so you have a calmer riding definitely. Here inside the city, does the vehicle feel too big? Well, on some European roads it does, but to ride the Q7 in general, the same accounts here for the SQ7, is basically very easy. You don't have to be big car savvy, so because the steering is very light and the suspension is also super comfortable, especially as we have the adaptive air suspension here, and so the vehicle tends to feel a little bit smaller than it actually is. Also the overview to all of the sides. Beautiful frameless mirror here, as I mentioned earlier. All the window lines are kept steep, so there's a very good overview, although you have a quite big car. Optionally, you can get several adaptive cruise controls. Here we got in everything inbuilt. And um, this also adapts to the traffic signs that are lying ahead. For example, I can set it now to the 50 kilometers run and um, then the camera is seeing the traffic signs and adapts the speed according to the traffic signs that are coming. And that's a really comfortable system that you never exceed the speed limit. It still gets pretty fast to your destination. See it right now, I did nothing. I was leaving the city, the speed limit went up to 90. The system was realizing it because it combines GPS, map data and the camera information. And so the basic information is drawn, for example, now with the GPS. It says, oh, okay, I'm outside the city now. And then when there are some new traffic signs, both systems try you know, to, to match the situation, then it's been calculated. Of course, you're responsible yourself at the end of the day. Still a very nice system. Let's now head onto the motorway. The cruise control is always set on 130, but 50 kilometers an hour is kept. You see the speed is kept through the corner, see, no foot on the throttle. So well, if you've seen, there are some mere situations where you have to pay attention still, for example, when the car is standing around the corner, but there are also a lot of situations where you have a really calm drive. Not accelerating myself still, getting onto the motorway, and now the system knows, okay, the berm is over, I could go to the, to the higher speed that is allowed here on the motorway. But as, a, as long as I'm, for example, now behind the truck, also the distance to the truck is being kept. So it's, I think, the best autonomous driving system where you still have to steer everything. Let's take it that way, maybe, because we've seen other fully autonomous driving systems, for example, like in the Tesla um, or in the Mercedes E-Class, where the fully autonomous feature is better evolved. But for example, with smooth reducing speed and corners and stuff, their Audi has figured it out. So if you would now combine you know, the Tesla model, where you have a lot of autonomous driving feature, the E-Class, which is very good autonomously on the motorway, and here the Q7 ACC system, if you com would combine all three, then you would, I think, have the perfect autopilot already right now. It's a very interesting fact. Acceleration here on the highway, um, I mean, if you're not in Germany, we're not in Germany here today, we're near Basel. And for example, 100 to 130. That could be a typical acceleration you could also do on non-German motorways. So let's see, again, 100 to 130, normal driving mode. And that's it, 136 already. So you got the instant torque and one of that reason is in lower RPM regions. You know, there are those two turbochargers and then only one of them is firstly active. If you get in the higher torque regions, also the second turbocharger gets active. The supercharger again, that one that is electronically powered, that one is already active at all times and assists especially also in the low areas. And there, with this big diesel and all those charging systems, they could significantly reduce or even eliminate the so-called, so it's a great German term for it, so-called uh, so Turboloch. That's, you know, figuratively a hole in the turbo acceleration, what is meant. 
that you, you know, with when you have a turbo lock, you don't have the immediate acceleration. You have to wait until the power of the turbo sets really in. And that's not really happening here, um, even in the higher speed regions. So you, for example, at 150, 15 kilometers an hour, pressing the pedal. And see, I don't have to wait for the car, even in the D mode. Um, it's happening so fast, it's really incredible. If I'm in the S mode, sport mode, gears are turned up higher, even more, and then you have another differentiation, but usually it will be totally enough all the way to stay in the D mode, and then you have still, I mean, a lot of power already. It's definitely one of the best autobahn cars, you know, for long, partly boring rides, and here with that one, you can make your ride also relaxing, despite the big power we have beneath the hood. And now to the conclusion, the new Audi SQ7. Is it really necessary to have so much power in such a vehicle? Well, it's not necessary, of course, but also the other engines you get are already, you know, very powerful. Those two turbochargers, one supercharger and the 48 volt, well, it's of course good for the development, maybe for future models, but for this very vehicle, I think it's a little bit over-engineered. However, in almost every respect, it's really a great car, it has a great design for SUV, you know, especially in the sporty layout, but also diminishes a little bit this wagon look. The interior is the best I can see so far, together with the new A4, really so highly refined. It's just really a pity that we don't see an Alcantara option here for the seats. You also have a lot of space on the inside, so you can combine a very sporty car with a very versatile car. Um, so you can use it, use it for both purposes. The sporty riding part, well, no, it comes really close to a Porsche Cayenne, which is a sister or brother model anyway. We'll also soon sit on this very platform here. And with this agility, with the measures with the anti-tilting function, for example, the differential we have, it's also a very sporty car as far as it goes with this weight and of course power at any time so for surely one of the dream suvs no question thank you very much for watching this auto fuel episode with thomas i want to hear your comments now on the exterior interior and what we've told you with driving and also give me your favorite color or trimble you would go with the sq7 thanks and bye